with Dark Phoenix now out in theaters, there are 12 X-Men films. So let's stop and rank these movies from worst to best. Hey everybody, my name is Justin. I love to watch movies. If you guys love to watch movies too, you guys are in the right spot. Make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and consider hitting that bell notification so you guys don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Today we're going to be ranking all 12 of the X-Men films. These include Deadpool, which are X-Men spinoffs. This franchise started years ago and really set the tone for comic book movies. And they have produced many good films and some bad films along the way. So before we do get started, leave your ranking down below for all 12 of the X-Men films, including the most recent one, Dark Phoenix. So let's start this list off with number 12, the worst film. X-Men Origins Wolverine. X-Men Origins Wolverine was the first standalone X-Men film. Hugh Jackman was ripped for his role as the Wolverine and I couldn't wait to see this film. But there isn't anything wrong with Hugh Jackman per se. Everything else in the movie just sucks. This is such a convoluted film that tries to cram so much into it. The film attempts to dig deep into Wolverine's past, but it's done so weak. It has an absolute terrible portrayal of Deadpool as well. Gambit is involved in the movie as well. The action is so shaky and poorly executed that you can't even get excited for what you're watching. X-Men Origins Wolverine was a poor attempt of handling this character and giving him a backstory. And it's a shame because Wolverine is one of the coolest X-Men characters. Coming in at number 11 is X-Men 3 The Last Stand. X-Men 3 The Last Stand saw Brett Ratner as the director after taking over the director's chair. And he had a huge task at hand with developing the Dark Phoenix Saga. The result was a film with terrible pacing and missing key points to Jean Grey's story. Some characters involved were decent like Magneto and Wolverine who felt more human in their role. The film also gave us Angel and Kitty as well but really did not do much with their characters. The movie also tried to mix the storyline about a cure for mutants but it never felt important throughout this movie. Coming at number 10 is X-Men Apocalypse. Oscar Isaac portrays Apocalypse, one of the coolest X-Men villains of all time. As he gathers his four horsemen to try and destroy the world. Apocalypse is such a powerful villain, but he was underdeveloped in the film and didn't reach his full potential. The movie gave us teenage versions of some iconic characters like Sophie Turner as Jean Grey and Ty Sheridan as Cyclops. I like the actors involved in the film. I think it's a smart choice to go backwards in time to show them as a teenager. Quicksilver also gave us another entertaining super speed sequence, but the third film in this reboot trilogy understands that it's bad. And even the characters know that the third film in the trilogy is always the worst one. Coming at number nine is Dark Phoenix, the most recent X-Men film. This is the second attempt at adapting the Dark Phoenix saga. It was better than the first try, but still not a great stab at it. Jean Grey's story and struggle with the Phoenix Force feels simplified when it could have been grand. Jean's struggle with controlling her powers and discovering who she really is is something I find intriguing, but the films presented a weaker version of it. Sophie Turner is once again great as Jean Grey. I don't have a problem with her. Jessica Chastain is good in her role as well. But I wish the film gave Sophie Turner more to do. I didn't hate this film, but I didn't love it as well. Overall, I just think this movie felt boring when the X-Men were talking to each other, and I wish they would have handled this film a little differently. Coming at number eight is The Wolverine, the second standalone Wolverine film. The second standalone film about Logan was much more grittier and straightforward compared to the Wolverine Origins movie. There is more depth to Logan as this film serves as a sequel to The Last Stand. Logan is still mourning Jean Grey's death, which you can fill in the movie. Some of the action is intense, while some of the action is also heavy on the CGI. This film also stripped Logan of his mutant healing abilities, which made him more vulnerable than ever. The end battle sequence between Wolverine and Silver Samurai did feel a little bit corny at times, but overall this film is enjoyable. Coming at number 7 is the first X-Men film. 
The first X-Men film set the stage for comic book movies. This movie offered a simple story and what made this film work is the casting. Hugh Jackman, Halle Berry, Patrick Stewart were all great in their roles. The movie also managed to do some great world building centered around mutants. The relationship between Professor X and Magneto felt authentic. It felt there was a solid reason why they hated each other and they were always against each other. X-Men made the mutant powers feel epic and added a lot of depth to the stacked amount of characters. Coming at number six is X-Men First Class. The soft reboot of the X-Men films. This presented much younger versions of Professor X and Magneto and explored the friendship between the two. James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender were perfectly casted in their roles. Matthew Vaughn directed this film and a new style to the X-Men movies was brought that was missing from some previous films. The setting during the Cuban Missile Crisis gave this film a spy feel along with the team aspect. I like discovering the team's abilities and the progression of Professor X and Magneto's friendship that eventually turned sour for them too and they eventually hated each other. This is a great film that it needed to happen and I love the direction that they were going with this movie. Coming number five is the second X-Men film, X2 United. X2 was a solid sequel to the first X-Men film that built up this world of X-Men characters. Brian Singer expanded the X-Men world by dividing the X-Men and having Logan step up. It also shook things up by having Magneto and Mystique team up with the heroes to save Professor X. I love these moments because it gave another layer to Magneto. Deathstrike provided some intense action scenes against Wolverine and the introduction of Nightcrawler was welcomed. I love Nightcrawler in this movie. The film still managed to focus on character development by also providing a complex and intriguing story. Coming in number four is X-Men Days of Future Past. This is one of the most complex and intriguing and well thought out storylines of any of the X-Men films. Days of Futures Past easily could have been the most convoluted mess of a film, but instead it perfectly balanced the characters of the soft reboot as well as the characters from the original trilogy. The story is complex and handled with such care. Wolverine goes back in time to find the young Professor X and Magneto to help protect their future. We meet a Professor X that is beaten down and beautifully played by James McAvoy. We also get some awesome scenes from Evan Peters as Quicksilver with his super speed sequence, which are always fun to watch. But Days of Future Past bridged the past and present X-Men movies with Hugh Jackman holding down both timelines. I've always also wanted to see the Sentinels play a huge role in one of the X-Men films and we got it and it definitely delivered. Coming number three is the first Deadpool film. This R-rated X-Men film was gory, hilarious, and vulgar all at the same time. This was a breath of fresh air and wrote the wrongs for what X-Men Origins did to Deadpool. Deadpool is a violent fourth wall breaking comedy that truly is one of its kind. Besides the constant humor, the relationships between Vanessa and Wade Wilson felt genuine. Some lesser known X-Men characters like Colossus and Negasonic Teenage Warhead play a big part in the role and instantly found a love in the audience. Having Deadpool narrate his own movie made it feel personal. Ryan Reynolds is great in this movie. It's hilarious, it's violent, it's just vulgar, and I absolutely love Deadpool. Coming at number two is Deadpool 2. Deadpool 2 was a great sequel to the first film, took everything that I loved about the first film and definitely expanded it. The second Deadpool movie added more emotion to Wade Wilson. Wade hides his emotion with humor, but the film was able to bring out the human side of Deadpool. The movie also gave him a more significant role with a few X-Men, which he handled well. The X-Force characters and Josh Brolin's Cable were well-written characters. The film was a great mixture of comedy, action, and heart, embraced all those moments while delivering another great performance from Ryan Reynolds. I laughed a lot throughout this film, and I even liked the Christmas one, that they played in December. I thought that was funny as well. But coming at number one, the best X-Men film, and that is Logan. Logan is a violent, emotional X-Men movie that caped off Hugh Jackman's role as Wolverine. 
Logan earned an Academy Award nomination for Best Adapted Screenplay, and it was well deserved. This isn't your typical superhero film. The themes are mature, it's R-rated, it's emotional, it's bloody. And Patrick Stewart and Hugh Jackman gave emotional, brutal performances. The introduction of Laura, an 11-year-old clone with identical mutant powers, brought a purpose to Logan's life where he was previously beaten down. Logan is a prime example of how to send off one of the best X-Men characters of all time. And it gave him such an emotional conclusion. Logan is one of the best superhero movies of all time. I love how it was written and I love how this film was handled. So there you guys have it. All 12 of the X-Men movies ranked worst to best. How would you rank these films down below? Make sure to hit that subscribe button down below so you guys don't miss any of my up and coming videos. My name is Just Watch Movies and you guys stay classy YouTube.